died of cancer. That was the second day of shooting, and we did 60 takes. <laughs> 20, 20, and 20. And they said, I've died 60 times of cancer in one day. <laughs> Please take care of me, because we have five months ahead. <laughs> and uh, that's how hard he works, and I love it. I mean, I, I, I'm everything that you can imagine in the negative side, but lazy. I'm not lazy. <laughs> uh, but it was a moment where it was like, we had to... But there's, this is what I meant, is you brought the line to a different place, a different dimension, where reality and the emotional weight of it is so huge that there's no way you can pretend that. You have to go and open yourself a heart and be that person. You know what struck me? I mean, there's so many interesting themes running through it, but the main thing is it's his father who's desperately trying to take care of his kids under the worst imaginable circumstances I can imagine anybody has to go through. I mean, was that something that stuck out for you in this film? Totally. I think that's the core of the movie, the heart of the movie. And nothing will work in this movie if it's not bad. That has to be the most important uh, part of the movie in the storytelling, because that's the part of the movie that we all get related to. You know? And that's why, that was, that's why it was so hard for us to find those kids, which are amazing. And they've yeah. never done anything before, and they saw the camera for the first time. But it was like, those scenes really need to work, otherwise they won't be a movie. And, and I think that's where the emotional core of the movie flies, when those scenes happen. How did you work uh, <laughs> uh, I was worried, he was worried, the director, that and we took care that those kids won't go back home <coughs> with those images in their mind. We want to make sure that they knew it was a fiction. What does that mean? Well, that means that I have to play goofy games, begin doing funny things, throwing jokes, playing with the toys. At the same time, I'm processing the scene that is going to come. So when he says action, they will jump in in the action. They will deliver the lines very, as you saw, very naturally and very realistically, without feeling anything, which is amazing. And then I will do my scene with them cut, and then we'll go back to the toys. So it was exhausting. <laughs> but it was a great lesson as an actor, because they didn't have to go like, give me a second, I have to think about my character. No, <laughs> doing it very naturally and very, and I'm basically good. So. Right. <laughs> um, Alejandro has told me in the past that this process of making this movie, the whole process nearly killed him, and he thinks it nearly killed you. Yeah. Um, is a movie worth all of that? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, uh, no, it's true. Uh, no, no. A movie is a movie, and we have to differentiate. Movies doesn't give answers. Movies, good movies, maybe. We are lucky, decide to entertain and have a good time, which is very important, especially in these times. Uh, some good movies can throw some questions for us to answer by ourselves at home. This is one of them, and that's why I'm interested in these kind of movies because it helps you to grow and make people more have some thoughts about things that are going on that they don't want to pay attention in the news or in the papers. You have to put it on the fiction, so it will make an, an emotional journey, and we understand the same issue differently from an emotion, emotional point of view. When if you are in the news, you just see it like uh, intellectually, like oh, that's bad, that's good. That's what movies can make. But, no, it's not worth it. It's not worth to build yourself for a movie. And yes, in this case, we were this close. Why? Because, because it was long and because it was, well, you saw it. It was, everything that you saw is not a lie. It was coming there. Pain is pain, love is love, suffering is suffering. And, uh, and yes, that's a dream of a reactor, but at the same time, how to do that from a safety place, that's what I have to learn. Yeah. Now you shot this in Barcelona. Yes. And Woody Allen never was there. No. In those places. <laughs> <laughs> no, completely <laughs> different. <laughs> um, was this? Uh, you're working back in the Spanish language here because we've seen you in so many uh, different movies lately, English language films and things. And was that a, a real attraction of going back and doing that? Now? Yes, I think it was. This was right after the the Oscar, so I was very honored and very happy, but also very up there. Out there, you know, uh, this is a great 
I mean, amazing recognition. So for me, it was very important to touch bases again and put my feet on the ground and, and do something with weight in my own language. That's why. And I think he, he feels the same. That's why we, we met each other in the, in the right moment. And that's why we did it. And it's, it's a different freedom. It's a different freedom. We all, we, all, we, we all have experiences in our mother tongue language, which is to say, Language is totally linked to emotions, and when I'm speaking here to you, I'm trying to express myself, but I can't, because English has not been in my life more than five years, but Spanish has been there for 42 years. <laughs> so words come out naturally and linked to emotions. And emotions. You were the first to win for No Country for Old Men, and how did that change the opportunities you were given and what you wanted to do uh, you know, in your career? Uh, it's funny, it, there are many things going on. Uh, I guess the day after I won the Oscar, I remember when I was six years old, and my father, my parents split when I was born, but I was living with my father and mother, and I saw, I remember my, watching the Oscars at night with my father when uh, Bob Hope was hosting Black and White. And my father was laughing a lot. They were translating what he was saying. I said, why is this thing so long and so boring? <laughs> my father looks to have a good time. And then, yeah, there will be some uh, familiar faces by actors that they were out there and they were, oh, I know that guy. So that's the first memory I have for the Oscars. And the day after I won, all that memory crashed on me, like saying, it's, it's, ama it's amazing what my life has been. So grateful and so thankful to many people that gave me a chance. To be there. I wish my father would have been there. Was it? But my mother was, and that's why I dedicated to her. That's a great moment. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do we have any questions from the audience? And I'll repeat it. What was the symbolism of the stuff on the ceiling? What was the symbolism of the stuff on the ceiling? There and not there. You mean the butterflies? Okay. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that's one of the Mexican things that he's bringing with him. I'm Spanish. He's talking to me about Mexican, whatever. I go, oh, whatever. I'll, I'll, look, I'll, I'll just look and put my face like, oh, my God. <laughs> Honestly, it was, it was months before. Uh, it was months ago. Like two months ago when I realized for the first time, two years after, what it was. Apparently, he went to a cemetery in Mexico. Um, these black butterflies are very known in Mexico for uh, posing, for, for being over the graves. Okay? But I didn't know that. I wish I would have known that when I was portraying my face, like, oh my god, something is coming. I don't know what it was. But that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, okay, she wants to know uh, how it all started. And you started very early, actually. I, w I started when I was five. Uh, my mother is an actress, she's 71. And I'm always saying that the parents of my grandparents are actors, were actors. So it's coming from a long, long time. And I tried to make my way out of it. I tried to paint. I went to, acting, uh, to painting school, Bellas Artes. But then I started to work as an extra in movies to get money to keep on painting. And then one day I was like throwing some lines out there on the set. And I said, you know what? I like this. But uh, and then I went to my mother and said, Mama, I want to be an actor. And she said, no, oh, please, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, yeah, I'm sorry, and I, there's nothing I can do. And she said, well, if you do it, earn it. Work hard for it, because it's not an easy job. And, and she always told me something that I'm always saying, but it's true. She told me, don't buy the gold, don't buy the failure, because neither of them are truth. Which is true. They are not telling the truth when they say you're the best, I'll give you an Oscar. And they're not telling the truth when they say you suck. Get out of here. <laughs> so just maintain credibility with your own self. <laughs> okay, saying who introduced the script? I think we know that was Alejandro. And why I, did you want to do it again? Alejandro gave it to me, and uh, because his his fear of the pages to be photocopied, photocopied, the whole script is red, and that was pretty. Like I had a red script on my hand. I said, well, there's a lot of meat here, man. It was very scary to just see the script. But uh, then I, I read it like four times, because I need to read it like many times to really see what's on the page. Otherwise, you are reading yourself. 
I wish this is this, I wish this is that, and then you don't see what is real on the page. I read it four times, I call him, and I said, as I told you before, I can't escape, I have to do it. No matter if I like it or not, which I love it, I have to do it. <laughs> what was the process for you as an actor working with him as a director in, uh, you know, making the movie while you were going through these five months? He's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant actor's director. He's brilliant. And you, you see his movies, you see all these amazing actors, Sean Payne, Naomi Watts, Benicio Del Toro, and Gael, Brad Pitt, uh, uh, doing these amazing works. Because he knows how to put you in a place where you are vulnerable, but also creative. Like, you are not stuck because he's oppressing you with thoughts or ideas. He's letting you go by throwing, you at, throwing at you some very good uh, advices, you know, that makes you, allows you to fly. He's a very good, very good, I think it's, I think it's the best acting director I've ever met.